are listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. Hello! Yeah. That was a better copy, guy. You should have let that go. <laughs> I don't know how far you wanted to go because I oh, didn't land it, so it. I didn't know what you know how far you want. We could refix that. No big deal. Oh, God. <laughs> me some Lloyd game. Lindsay Look Young. Him, man. Look at him. While we were gone, he was doing stuff, you know. No, actually, I gotta give credit to Tank. He hooked me up. He came in clutch. Did Tank he? Him is... Yeah. He was he was taking care of this business while me and Louie were breaking down on the highway. Oh my god. Oh yeah. If we if Good we times. didn't kill each other that trip, we did we did all right. I have to say, we had a little little swerve at the end there. Yeah, right at the end because we just had our patience was out. So so we were screaming at each other in the airport. Two the two port. two different two different rent the car places. As uh, we got there, said, "Oh, by the way, we don't have your car." Two different times <laughs> to get home. Then he tells me this. I said, "How am I going to get home? What are you going to hitchhike?" That ain't my problem, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, really? What? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> So we're going to throw it out there so you guys bombard them with bad reviews. Oh, That's my what I God. Wanted to do. But all in all, good show, bro. We met a lot of people, uh, a lot of guests maybe were coming on, right? Just walking up, some heavy hitters. Not as heavy as the hitter we got on tonight, bro, because the guy we got on tonight might be the heaviest hitter of all. He was doing it, bro. When I'm not even talking about the kids in the chat here. I'm talking about <laughs> the other guys. He was guy. doing it while you were forcing the slats on your crib, bro, and sh- kicking <laughs> shit in your diaper and in asking for mommy's nipples. Well, he, this guy was doing it, bro. He was doing it. The squire of East New York. That's, that's that, what huh? we got tonight. How old is he? 94. 94. Did you hit him with the line? No, I, I saved him for you, bro. That's All right, I'll, I'll hit him with it. All right. He's got his sons with him, too. Yeah. Oh, but you know what happens with the ferals? If you get if you get one, you get one them all, right? Comes, they're all they coming. Come. So I don't know if I, can, I definitely can't handle that. Well, yeah, they're all giggling in the background. <laughs> I guess, you know? I bet you they all got brass knuckles in their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take one care of One guy's going like this. Way. What did he say? Did he what? Say? What? what the hell did he say? I'm afraid did he say what I thought he said? Yeah. That brass or a blanket party. <laughs> yeah, so we met a lot of good people, man. A lot of good networking we did. We got something we're working on that's going to be huge. We're not going to say what it is. And a guy from this, 27 truck. But this gotta, this new thing, we didn't even tell Gans yet what it is. It's going to be oh, huge. We finally talked to Al Benjamin. We oh, uh, squared that away. We yeah, squared it away. Oh, he, hated, he hated me for the last 25 years. Uh, we squared it away. Which love we could all understand why. But. <laughs> so I'm a love-hate guy. If you love me or you hate me, most of you hate me. But that's all right. That's all right. He can handle it. He's got uh, big shoulders. Yeah, you know who loves me? Matthew Farrell. That's all I care about, bro. I when call him Matty. I don't know about you. When AJ came up to you, you go, You dick! <laughs> <laughs> you don't call him I Chief? Did. I did. What? I call him what? Oh, Chief Farrell? Oh, yeah. Maybe you hey. call him Chief Farrell. I call him Ma- Matty. Maddie, well, you guys are like that now. Hey, okay, he got up. Well, he got on, on top. I, on the as I was going, as I was going over his career, right? Uh, looking at when he got on 1952. Oh, like, oh boy, 57 pointed at the NY 61. I'm like, nope, not born yet. 66, <laughs> nope, come over to captain, not born yet. Uh, <laughs> so, Holy All right, so let's, you know what? I can't wait. We got to get him in here, but first, we got to do right. the we got uh, two, two ads coming at you really quick. Uh, get it done, guys, do it. All right, here we go. Armor Tough. Armor Tough interlocking floor tiles are the best choice to replace new or aging, stained or cracked concrete or epoxy floors. Here's why. Armor Tough tiles come with a lifetime warranty and are usually installed in one or two days, depending on the size of your station, with virtually no disruption in daily operation. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are guaranteed from chipping, cracking, peeling, breaking, or staining. Once installed, the tiles are non skid and non slip and meet the ADA standards for the friction coefficient. The tiles are stain resistant and impervious to any chemicals or volatiles that are used in the fire service. Once installed, your floor will be easy to clean with just soap and water. Install an Armor Tough tile floor in your apparatus bays, offices, training rooms, workshops, exercise rooms, kitchens, banquet halls, or any other room in your station. Call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908 917 7697. 
Why install a breakable epoxy floor that will need replacing in five to 10 years when you could have a floor that will last a lifetime? Drop a halligan on an Armor Tough floor and you won't see any damage. Don't try this with concrete or epoxy. Join the hundreds of career and volunteer fire departments nationwide who have chosen an Armor Tough interlocking tile floor. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are half the price of epoxy and will last a lifetime without issue. Again, call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908 917 Seven six nine seven. Awesome. And by the way, while I was in New Jersey, a guy actually came up. I should have took his name. He said, uh, "If you really want to know what the uh, friction coefficient, it's this." Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, like, I don't even know what you just said, bro. But it sounds like you know what it is. So. Oh shit! I hear. You. <laughs> I was hearing. <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me. Friction coefficient is blah 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 blah. blah. Let's get the heck out of the chief. All right, here's our new sponsor tonight. We got a yes. brand new sponsor on the show. Do it. Here we go. The fire store. The fire store. Equipping protectors with passion. Every decision we make as a company is about you, our customer. We wouldn't be where we are today without you, and we don't take that lightly. The fire store, started by simply seeing and fulfilling a need in the fire service, is how we operated then, and is how we continue to operate today. No matter how much we grow, we will always staff active or retired firefighters, police officers, EMTs, and paramedics. With over 1,000 years of combined public safety experience, we know our products and our customers and will never compromise on quality because your safety matters. We understand that having the right gear can mean the difference between life and death. Our goal is to get you the gear you need when you need it at prices you can afford. Visit us at thefirestore.com for everything but the truck and shop our family of brands including Streamlight, MSA, Lion, Fleer, and more. He's nice. whispering. He's like, why? Yeah, yeah, we got to bring quiet. him up a little. Yeah, we got to bring the sound yeah. up. But we've been doing business with the fire store for what, Ruffy? 10 years? At least. Yeah, something like 10 years. We got a lot of good guys over there. So they have a website. Check them out. We, check them out. Check They're them all over the place. Yeah. All right. You want to bring well, him in? You want to bring him in or we want to run our head? What are we doing? You're killing me. <laughs> oh, were we supposed to run our head? You want to wait yeah. on that, Ruff? Yeah. Yeah, we can wait on it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, you, you know do, what? Because you're getting very. Well, no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you guys. I'm ready for ah. the, the intense introduction. Do, do the build up, bro. Come on. Brrr, we got to get a drum roll, bro. Coming to the stage. 94 years old. 94, 94 year old. With his two Chief, sons. as uh, Kevin likes to call him, Matt Farrell. Chief Matt Maddie. Farrell. Matt. There he is. Chief, you look shocked. I got I to gotta call Party Foul right away, bro. He has 94 years. Look at a head of hair on him. I'm, gonna, I, I'm calling Party Foul. Look at his son. They all got a head of hair on him. Like, Chief, of Chief, I got to hit you with the, the uh, patented line. Listen, yeah. we're, very, we're very happy that you came on the show because uh, we don't know how much longer you got. You know, You're welcome, Chief. <laughs> but you know something? I don't know how much longer I have either, by the way. If you find out, please tell me. God bless. I hope you got 50 more. Oh, Good 50. You, I hope you got 100. Great. Yeah, it, man. Smart as a whip. He still got it. Uh, we're gonna get into his career and all his stories, bro. Because I've been, I've been chopping at the bit, bro. Listening to some of the stories, I gotta tell him a couple times. Whoa, save it for the show. Mm-hmm. Salivating well, over here. Salivating. You have been. Yes. <laughs> first, let's get a little patriotic, and then we'll dive right into this man's career. All right, here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We also got to thank Ron Zoni for putting this together. He made this all happen. As much as I don't want to give him credit, we got to give him credit. Yes. Thank you, Ron Zoni, for bringing us all together. Thank you. All right, Chief. Let's go back. I usually I usually saw like this. Let's go back, but in your case, I'm gonna go. Let's go. Let's go way back. Let's go back. <laughs> to, way way back to the early days. <laughs> Tell us a little about where you, time. where you grew up. What made you want to be a fireman? Life as a you know your childhood a little bit. So let's start from there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I should start with my father was a firefighter. 
came on wow. around 1932 or something. And uh, he was the beginning. I followed him. My brother Charlie followed me. My two sons, Richard, one sitting to the right of me, John sitting to the left of me. We all wound up on the job, all five of us. There's people that have had five people on the job, but I don't think anyone had the same badge. We shared badge 3662 for 130 years. Between wow. The five wow. That badge is in headquarters in the, in the file, and the next pharaoh that comes on the job, if ever, can go in, claim it, and he'll be given that badge on his appointment to the job. So I do oh. think that's a bit of a record. That's wow. awesome. Wow. That is years of pharaoh. Incredible. So... Well, now, you guys, when did you get on? Were you, were you on when your dad was still on the job? Did you get a chance to work with him? Or? Yes, I did. In fact, a little story with that is my father retired, the forcible time, time to retire, 65, mandatory retirement. And I had gotten made captain. And he told everybody that, that the reason he was retiring, because he didn't want, he was lieutenant. He didn't want me to be his boss. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. He's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, he was forced out of the job at 65, but that's the story. That's the story he told everybody. It's very, uh, well, it. what, what, what part of the, where are you from? What part of the city are you from? Yeah, from Brooklyn. We're all from Brooklyn. We all got appointed. Richard's to the right. John, stick your head in here. Just show yourself quick. Another guy with the head <laughs> the of The boys head. are here. We, all were, we were all appointed in Brooklyn. The only one that was appointed outside Brooklyn was my brother, Charlie. He was appointed in Queens. And, and my father was appointed as a firefighter, 212 engine in, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Oh, we so was my, my brother worked there, too. That's an old firehouse, man. Yes. The People's yeah. Firehouse. Hey, hey, Chief, I wanted to ask you, do you remember as a kid going to the firehouse, to your dad's no, my firehouse? Father, no, my father never took, uh, took us. I know that was a common thing with firefighters, but my father never took anybody to the firehouse, you know? I don't think he wanted us to see those reprobates. <laughs> <laughs> but so you all worked in Brooklyn too, right? You two yeah, sons worked in yes, Brooklyn as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was appointed in, in two thirty three oh engine where my father was a firefighter in two thirty three engine. Nice. And, uh, it, 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 we had we had we had we had kind of similar careers. My father wound up in headquarters. He was a, a crackerjack typist, stenographer. He had graduated from St. Leonard's Academy in Brooklyn. In his day, there was no lady secretaries. They were all men. And uh, he he took care, eventually took care of transfers and all kinds of information, badges and stuff. That's how we got to keep the badge. He put right. the badge away each time, every time, till we passed it down to each other and so forth. Was your he dad in the war? He spent dad... his life in headquarters, you know? Did, did yep. your dad fight in World War II? No, he did not. No, no. So I know a lot yeah. of guys went, but so he, was, he was born 1900, so I guess 44. He was like 44 he was years older. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you know that you always wanted to get on the job, Chief, early on? Did you always feel like you wanted to be a fireman, or did your father just say, take the test, or your mom, or no, something? No. for a long time. No, oh, I, I, I did. I, I did want. I, the reason I, I got on the police, it came up first. The police department oh, test came up, and I took it, and I wow. got a wow. look at that. Oh, wow. who is that. I don't know who that young kid is. <laughs> look but anyhow, at that guy. I, I, I took it with that thing. I didn't intend to leave the job, but uh, after four and a half years in the police department, I I got a little soured on a couple of items here and there. And uh, my father said, Matty, do yourself a favor. Take the next fire test and switch over. And it was the smartest thing I ever did. I get you in the, get you in the calendar. Hold up, put that back up for a second. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that guy. Yeah, no wonder. I'll tell you right now, you took that cop thing off, that uniform off, and put him like he that guy's a movie star, right? Uh, now. That's what I was calling a movie me? star, bro. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You had to have all the girls chasing you there, Chief. I'm not you kidding me. Well for you saying that, by the way. I was 23 years old there, 23. So it's his neck. You play football? 71 years ago, you do realize that the 71 year old picture you're looking at. Photo. Ah, did you play yeah. football or anything? How'd you get the gigantic no. neck? Yeah, because no. he was still stacked. No, I didn't play any of the sports. I didn't want to ruin that perfect body. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. Wow, look at the hair on him then, too. My yes. God. Uh, yes. man. Hey, your dad, were, you, were your family born here or was your dad born in Ireland? What? I'm sorry. Was your dad born in Ireland or was he born here? No, he was born here. Uh -huh. uh, his his grandfather was the first. Ah. His father was born here too. 
but his grandfather was born in Ireland. Wow, did you have to throw any beatings as a cop? You know, back in the day. In the no, Motorola places. ships. They didn't have Motorola. They didn't have Motorola. <laughs> they had the billy clubs, right? You threw a couple yes. of billy club beatings. I, I still have mine. It's yes. hanging hanging on a peg in my basement. Just did you wipe case. the blood off it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. That's, I'm hitting myself with it. You're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I forgot. I got to read this, Ruff. Oh. I've been waiting to read this. This is what the chief had written in, in pencil on the bottom of his thing. It says, as I look back on my 37 plus years of service, I patrolled the dark streets and alleys as a police officer. I crawled down the hot, smoky hallways as a firefighter. God was always with me. He, he Amen, sure brother. was. He sure was. He looked out. He looked after me all my life, God. Believe me. Well, maybe we should make a shirt like that. What, what do we got to give him? A little vig on that? How much? Yeah, I'd let well, we're going to have to up it now, 15%. Oh, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Kevin in pricing. Just remember Kevin in pricing. <laughs> oh, don't let me price you. I'll price you right out of it. Holy mackerel. All right, so you got to – you got oh, I'm on the wrong page. Look, I'm, I'm on the last page. It's the 80s, right? Okay. <laughs> so, the last page is the 80s. So 1952, Holy. you're appointed to the NYPD and assigned to 102nd Precinct in Queens. Where is that? Is that on Junction 1 or 2? Richmond Hill. Oh, Richmond, Richmond Hill. Near Wood, yeah. near Wood, Jamaica Avenue, Woodhaven Boulevard, Levitz right. Boulevard, Richmond Hill section. Woodhaven, oh. Woodhaven, Richmond Hill. What was that neighborhood back then? Uh, it was it, it was very quiet. Uh, it, it was um, single family homes and so forth. It was, it was kind of peaceful. And it, to be honest with you, it was not easy to be a young cop there because there was very little action. It was kind of boring, in fact, you know. Uh, right. Friends of mine that went to Harlem or wherever they were gone, they were working, you know, they always had a lot more to do. So at any rate, it, I, I had some friends. I kept some friends in that job for the rest of my life until they passed away. And uh, I'm glad I spent the time in the police department. Taught me a lot, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Brings you up to speed pretty fast, right? You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, were, you you a, a, were you on a foot post there, Chief, or were you in a car? Yeah, yeah. I, I, they had one-man radio cars. And you had to have 20 years in a job to get in a radio car. I'm telling you, there were guys walking the street with 18 years. They walked in the beats. A beat, they called it. Walking a beat. Yeah, walking did, you, a beat. did you have the flip down with the, the bit bayonet there, whatever the heck that thing is there? You, you, you flipped around the club there? You know, like when you're walking? Yeah, that's the thing. The you police see. baton, you mean? The, club. the oh, yeah, baton. Yeah. You had to flip. Yeah. You, we, we, yeah. pranked, we pranked. We pranked. We police academy. They put us out on the weekends in the street. And another probie and myself were, were standing inside a doorway. And we were practicing swinging the batons. It was a way of doing it. The cops could yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he lost grip on his, and it smashed into the pane glass window. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. And, and the, two of us, the two of us, this is in Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn. We ran, we ran down the street, and, and the guy that did the job, not me, but the guy that did the job just kept yelling out, stop, stop. <laughs> we went around, thought we were chasing somebody. We were just running away from the damage. <laughs> kind of waves. <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> uh, Whoops, daisies. That's great. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Man. You got any other stories before we go to the fire service? Any cop stories you want to share? Well, not, I don't know. I got a million stories. You tell me whatever it is that you want to talk about. What was, did you arrest anybody? Did you have a first arrest that you yeah, remember? I, I, yeah, oh yeah. I, I had a, I had a couple of uh, of uh, uh, meritorious and excellent citations and stuff, you know. And uh, work, I worked some good guys. Some of those guys in the police department worked, but they really were good. By the way, just as an interest to all these young people out there, my salary was two hundred twenty dollars a month. Oh my god! One hundred and ten dollars twice a month, not every two weeks, twice a month. For a total of two twenty at the end of the month. Oh my god! What a grand! Yeah. How could you not want to be a cop? Turn it to dark alleys, chasing yeah. people. Oh. Yeah. Today, that'll <laughs> buy you like two dozen eggs. You know, and you were living in a lap of luxury, huh? Look yes, yes. We I think I found a photo of him with the baton. Is that? Oh, what that is? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just a, a quick comment. My proby class was one hundred and fifty men. Fifty of us of the one fifty, one third were ex-cops. And and a couple of those guys there, they had eight years, time, nine years, ten years. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a mass yeah. exodus back in those days. Those from the police smart department. ones. Those are the smart the ones, man. was hemorrhaging men, believe me. They were in serious problems. 
So 57, you're appointed to the FDNY. How long is probe school? It's probably back on Woods Island then, right? It probably school, yeah. It was a couple of months. Yeah? Yeah. I think, it, it, I think it was like 60 days or nine. They put us out on the street uh, early, two weeks ahead of time. We were supposed to get out in January. And be, because of the holiday, they put us out in middle of December, like December 15th on the, on, in the, on the street. Right. In the, and they needed, we were having some riots in Harlem at the time. They needed cops up in Harlem. They detailed, they didn't send you anywhere they wanted to send you in those days, you know? I'm talking probably school, fire department. Yeah, I'm talking, oh, they're talking fire department, probably school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Was, they, the, the probably school was like, uh, I think it was about two months or something like that in those days. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it was back in Wards Island then, right? I think. What? I'm, I'm mean, sorry. Where'd you go to probably school? Oh, yeah, probably school. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was in the, in the Wards Island, Wards, yeah, yeah, the island, yeah. We went to yeah. school, yeah, and Long Island City, I think, was the spot we went to, too. Right, so a long time ago, so forgive me. My yeah, yeah, no, that's where it my was. Memory isn't as half as good as it used to be. It so. was in Long Island. Yeah, that's right, I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. So <laughs> I'm asking you what happened 70 years, <laughs> 70 years ago, <laughs> yeah. Where, what, how many days was it? Oh, uh, yeah, it was uh, 14. that's the difference between you and I. You can't remember what you had for breakfast, I can't remember if I had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how do you get to go to 233? Did you about to, your father make yeah. a call or something? He's like, yeah, yeah, my father was a firefighter there. And at the time I got appointed to the job, he was in headquarters and where they made assignments. And he just, oh, oh I see how this works. It was, a, it was a busy unit. It was not a slow place or nothing. He just uh -huh. wanted to send me to the unit that he that he had been a firefighter in. And uh, it, it, we, as I said, towards the five of us, we had our, the same badge from my father for for 132 years. So it was, it was quite a connection with the department and, and units that we worked in, you know? Right. So walk us through your first get there. Uh, what's it like in the firehouse in 1957? I'm sure, did they have a TV in the kitchen? What was it like in the kitchen in 1957? Yeah, it, was, uh, it, 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 was, it wasn't bad, uh, uh, but uh, there was no modern conveniences. Uh, but they, they, there wasn't too much money spent on fire quarters in those days. And anything that was done in quarters the firefighters did themselves, right. uh, you know, we, we replaced broken tile. They put the furniture in, they got the table fixed. They painted the kitchen. They, they took care of the place themselves. Otherwise I think it would have fallen apart, you know? Right. And, and how long are you there before you catch your first job? Do you remember your first night tour? Yeah, I, think, first... I think it might've been about a month and uh, we got a job. I still remember Pacific street. And the reason I remember it is a, a little baby died at the fire. Oh, shit. And, uh, I, it just, I just, I'm, I still think about it today. I'll be honest with you. It sounds kind of gruesome, but uh, I get used to adults dying at a lot of fire deaths over the years and fires. But there's something about a child dying or a baby dying that you, you just never got over. I don't, yeah. I, I remember every one of them, but I'll put it that way. Yeah. So I guess when you get the, at that time, you guys are still riding the back, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No masks. But, the back step, yep, open, CD rigs, open cabs and stuff like that, you know, just right, right back. And uh, no masks? No mask, no, no. M they came out MSA, <laughs> Mine no. Safety Appliance. No, no. You <laughs> couldn't use it in the basements of any place. And if you wore it up, there were only two of them. And if you wore it up in, in 15 minutes before you got the hose up to the second floor, it, it was depleted. So we had, we had uh, no, no mask. No. Wow. What was the neighborhood like back then, Chief? In uh, in Brown, Brown that was Brownsville, right? Two thirty three's. Uh... Yeah, it was uh, East New York section. East New York, like yeah. More than, more than yeah, Brownsville, yep. East New York. Uh, it was uh, it was not a wealthy neighborhood, tenements, but it was middle class, and it was uh, it was fairly nice area. Uh, today, with the, the the place I was a firehouse on Hull Street is yeah, it was on Hull, right? Condo. Yeah. It's condo now, the firehouse. Yeah. Someone took a photo of it and sent it to me. It's funny to see your old firehouse, and it's and it's it's divided up into three. Yeah, streets, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hauling back. Under. Yeah, but it was it was it was a nice neighborhood. I worked with some beautiful people. Some of these people are still my friends today after all these years, 65, 70 years. Wow. Who I was going to say, who do you who do you remember that that kind of took you under their wing and kind of taught you the job? People that you remember was it was a captain or was it a senior yeah. man there or somebody? Yeah, well, the senior men always help you out, the, the senior guys. But as long as you're mentioning that, it's a good time for me to say 
that every job I ever had on the way up, there was always somebody put his hand out to help me. And, and, and when you were brand new in the rank and you didn't quite know the, the job or have experience, you needed that help. But I always remembered how kind they were to me. And in my time in the job, I always try to pass that on. I always felt it was like a debt that I owed to other people that came behind me. And I, and I never forgot those guys that, uh, that, that helped me like that. They went out of their, really went out of their way. And I appreciate it. Appreciate like it. A, I appreciate it. Till, till like today. A, a pay it forward type of thing, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. yes, exactly. I mean, that, that is what our job is, right? I mean, it exactly. really is. You're just passing information along. You're, oh, yeah. It's yeah. just your little time in the firehouse, and then yeah. you're gone, and then the guys are uh, that are there today, tomorrow, yeah. and that's how it's going to be. Listen, everyone's running out of a burning building. You're running in. There's something wrong with that thing, I think, right? <laughs> you see, yeah. people, people I see close to that military. The uh, military, you know, is somewhat similar. In other words, they're laying their life on the line. You know, they, they know it when they go into work and, and, right. and so forth. So it's a it's a job with a job like that builds brotherhood and camarader camaraderie. It really does. Right. Now, what about your two boys there? Did you guys go to the firehouse with dad as opposed to, you know, he never went. Did you guys go with him to like the Christmas party yeah. and stuff? Jo John, Rex. Uh, I, I remember not so much going into the firehouse because uh, it was just so much going on in our house all the time. My father was going to work and probably working two and three jobs at the time. I remember him telling me stories about how he'd pull over on the Belt Parkway and say, am I going to the firehouse today or am I going to go <laughs> you know, do a job with Artie Weber or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. paint somebody's house? Because there were six of us and there was a lot going on. But I do recall some fond memories of uh, going to firehouses when my dad went to go get promoted because, as you may get into with some of the old black oh, and white yeah, photos, yes, there you go. Wow. We were always there for the promotions, and it was really beautiful for the whole family. And it was, uh, it was, it was really a nice memory to have, and I still have that today. Okay. I'll carry that on for the rest of my life. Rich, you want to comment on anything, Rich? There's the boys. There's John and Richard. Look at this. <laughs> Look, he still got that. I like fox. the ties. The, the movie star face. Look at that. I, yeah, I was being made lieutenant there that day. I'm wearing the firefighter's uniform. So that was there. I got made the lieutenant. You know what else? You did a good job. You're part of the same club we are, the I Married Up Club. Good for you. <laughs> good for you. Uh, God, pull that down. Six so kids. See. Leave that woman alone, for God's sakes, would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the job on, yeah, one of the, the promotions I have, I had all the kids with me, and uh, Lowry was the fire commissioner, and he started pointing out the kids, one, two. He was counting them down, sitting down in the audience. And he said, are they all yours? And I said, yes, they are, Commissioner. He said to me, I won't ask what you're going to do with your raise. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Is it John? John, who's on the other side? What made yeah, you want to be a father? John Rich, you want to say something? There? Yeah, well, Rich. I could, I could oh, say Rich. one thing my father told me a number of times. It's pretty comical, actually. And I think he said to me, and I could stand corrected, um, he had six promotions because he had six kids. If he had a seventh kid, he would have been chief of the department. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess he just stopped when he got to keep moving up, right, chief? The, that's yes, the only way the yeah. paycheck gets bigger. It was a tissue of lies, but yeah. I was I was good at. It. <laughs> <laughs> I came from a family of seven too. My dad was a fireman. Okay, and, you got it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, my two brothers were firemen, and I was a fireman. My uncle was okay. a fireman. Same thing. Yeah. So your mother hit all the yodels and the desserts would just out. <laughs> I know, all I know is that when yeah. father went to work, we were so happy because we got to watch something on TV other than like Nova Channel 13 or something. Else. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, and we can eat at a, a decent time and we can have, watch whatever we want on TV. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you got, where'd you get assigned? Somebody was in 209, right? Rich? Originally I was in uh, assigned to 209. My father sent me there, ironically, saying the captain there was extremely tough because I needed to be straightened out. Oh. And I got there, when I got there, the captain was on medical leave, and I got a captain there that was a good friend with my Uncle Charlie, who was also a firefighter, and he was the sweetest guy in the world. 
He's like, son of a gun, you got to weigh with it again. <laughs> I'll show you. I guess I didn't get my butt kicked on that one. By the way, I was booking Burrow Command, and he was in Brooklyn at the Proby. <laughs> And they, they, they took him one day and they, they hung him from the pole hole what? and threw garbage and all water all over him. And they got to run. They left the firehouse with him dangling at the end of the rope. Out of a, this is this is how they treated the borough commander's son. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a hazing. It was a hazing. It was what a hazing. Allegedly. Allegedly. You know who my father is? <laughs> you know who my dad is? Yeah, that don't yeah, go You know who my dad well, is? Yeah. No, my I don't want another pail of garbage on him. Go. <laughs> Get yeah. another I get the dirty pellet on yeah. because I made a visit. You required as a as a borough commander to visit every quarter once a year. You have to, all your quarters. And I made one quarter without even realizing it that Richard was working. And he was. And they all lined up cheap in quarters, the usual routine. Oh my god. And I spotted Richard. So I I said, Rich, come here. I pulled him out of the line. I said to him, just point out the guys that are picking on you. <laughs> it, was, it was a coincidence, but shortly thereafter, they hung Richard up and threw the garbage on him. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> so what about you, John? It's John, right? John and Rich. I uh, came out of Proby School. I got assigned to 225 Engine in East New York. Uh, quite the privilege to go back and work with many, many of the firefighters uh -huh. that my dad actually worked with during his time in East New York. And they really uh, showed me a lot of what the job was all about. And, you know, I was the scared little probie in the firehouse, and I tried to keep it a secret, you know. And then next thing I know, I went up oh, to my locker man. and in big block letters it said, do you know who my father is? Wow. <laughs> he was the every day. And what, what year was that? That was yeah. 1984, January. He had one of the finest captains in the job, yeah. Patty, Patty Corcoran. Yeah. And... and, and Patty's still alive. Patty's still alive right. and still kicking. He said, John, I just want to let you know. I know the reason why your father sent you here. And if he can't straighten you out, I'll be the man to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, Cap, let's rock and roll. Did, Was, you, uh, did you stay there the whole time? Yes, I spent my whole career oh, in wow. the engine. Uh, I have to say, a little bit of a rebel in the family. As I, my brother told the story before, uh, as my father said to my mother, God rest her soul, Noreen, I had six kids, six promotions. If I had seven, I could have been a chief of the department. Mm -hmm. I said to my wife, Laura, I took two lieutenant's tests. We had four children. If we had five kids, I could have passed that fucking test. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, right? Son of a bitch. Was, uh, was John Seville there? Yes, Anywhere? John Seville was there. One of my favorite guys. I love him. Yeah, we called him Sheville. <laughs> oh yeah! Listen, if you want to say something bad yeah, about 103, know. now's the time. No, John, I worked with fabulous <laughs> guy along with Ronnie and many other great firemen. There, yeah, 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 it was yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I loved it there. And at it. the end of my career, I was driving the captain. I had to spot, and I was one of the senior guys in the house. And then, you know, it is what it is. The cards I was dealt, I didn't quite make 20, but uh, hmm. I loved the ride. It was fantastic. Uh, were you an officer, Rich? Did you become an officer? They become an officer. That's you, Rich. Oh, Mace. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I came on in, oddly enough, February 27th, 1982, on my father's birthday. And in 1997, I guess I got my lucky Saturday. I made lieutenant, and then I bounced around for about two years. And then I got assigned to, uh, oddly enough, Richmond Hill on Jamaica Avenue at 294-143. 43, yeah. Yeah, that's where I spent the rest of my career. I retired in 2005. Oh, wow. was Mikey Fiddle there? Mikey Fiddle? He might oh, yeah. Oh, Mikey sure. Fiddle. Mike, Fiddle. Mike Fiddle. Oh, God. The banjo player. He's awesome, right? Are you kidding me? He used to freaking love playing yeah. the banjo at Christmas parties. Wasn't he? He was like a, uh, I forget, was he a clammer? I forget what the hell he did. I think he was a clammer, Mikey well, Fiddle, right? got him in my phone. Is Mike Fiddle clams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was in I was in 263, 117 with him. He was such a great yeah. guy, man. I love him. He doesn't him. do clams anymore. Now he has an oyster farm. Oh, oh is that he's, right? Oh, he's freaking he's awesome. He's he moving up in society. He's an oyster. He's a funny guy. guy. I love him. Mikey Clams. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah funny. Mikey Clams. He's a great guy. Love All right, him. so let's get out of the 50s. We're actually going to go to 1961 when you get promoted to lieutenant, Chief. So yes. where, do you, where do you go as a lieutenant? Believe it or not, I covered for two and a half years, and my father was in charge of transfers in headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reoccurring theme here. I don't know how that happens. 
Now you know why we all went to the ghetto. Yeah, 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 yeah no doubt. He, he bent over so far, my father, yes. that, that to prove that he wasn't being favorable to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guys of Simons that came, that promoted after me, I literally went to my father and told him, listen, I'm going to have to bring charges against you <laughs> soon if you don't get me a spot. I was looking for a spot, but I covered for five and a half years as a lieutenant, a captain, and a battalion chief. Five and a half years. I worked in every borough, every division, three quarters of the battalions, half of the job I worked in, fireboats, squads, uh, rescue companies, uh, you know, engines and ladders and so forth. And I'll tell you one thing. I saw the good. I saw the bad. I saw the ugly. But it was quite an education. And later on, that was very important when I carried that into my future ranks. I remembered all these lessons I learned, and I learned plenty of lessons. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. doubt. So wh what? where was your first spot then as a lieutenant? Yeah, the first spot as a lieutenant was ladder 103. Wow. Where? Yeah, I, got, I came there. 103. 103. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what follow the, say it. Say follow it, the smoke, baby. Follow, follow the smoke. smoke. Follow the smoke. You'll baby. find it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, in the 60s, when I was a lieutenant down there, any of the guys I work with, and I work with great guys. John Vigiano comes to my mind. John was one of them. He passed away. You know, he lost both his sons, Joe and John. And they called them the war. They still today call them the war years. They, 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 we, we were attacked on the way to the road, Molotov cocktails, sash weights, uh, bricks, uh, broken to your car while you're on runs, broken to the firehouse while you're on a run. I mean, it, it was just unbelievable. A constant, constant under attack. And you know, those guys, I called them the Motley Crew, by the way. The Motley Crew never once said, you know, Lou, we're not going out. They still got on that rig and drove out that door, even though they were going to get the crap kicked out of them on their way to the next fire. They were an amazing group of guys. Never, ever will I ever forget those guys to the day I died. Yeah. Chief, was the squad there at the time? Like, did you? Yeah, uh, the, squad, the squad was what? Squad four we had. was It wasn't in with us, but. And eventually they put a second truck as you 1032 was there. And we wound up with the uh, with two ladder companies and an engine. Which one? We had a we had we had 25 men working on one single tour. That's the normal complement of a firehouse. A regular firehouse had maybe 25 men assigned to the house. We had them working every tour. Wow. A total madhouse. Come and go and come. We were doing eight thousand runs a year. We were the busiest house in the city. In the world. And in the, in, in the, the world, world. Oh. in the world, it was an article. Yeah. At any rate, it was it. It's uh, they were not pleasant days, but I'll tell you one thing: the guys were, were absolutely uh, beyond. They were I just could never repay them. And never, I was never, never for one moment was ever ashamed of those guys. They, they, I wouldn't have blamed them if they said we're not going out. I mean, they're being they're beat up, and and I'm talking about. I'm not talking about minor things. Hospitals. We had guys in the hospitals. The jaws ripped open. Guys slashed across the face. Mike Simmons, two and a quarter in your house in 225, got stabbed and then lost his eye and stuff like that. And yeah, he lost his eye. I remember. It was, they, had, they, they, they suffered. And, but they worked right through those hard times. They still responded. Chief, and in that, the early 60s, was that was magnificent. Was it mostly vacant back then? In the early, like, was it already vacant at that time or it was going towards that? <laughs> It was, yeah, it was yeah. going towards it. Yeah, it was going towards it. Yeah. It was changing, by the way. When I first came into Brownsville, it was heavily uh, uh, heavily Jewish, by the way. And then it came over to be in uh, where it was. Uh, yeah. And then, it, and then it turned into Hispanic uh, neighborhood and so forth. But but you could see the changes little by little, uh, you know, in the area. But wow. uh, I was asked by the Dev division commander, Charlie Drescher, another wonderful man, to come back when they put the second truck in. Because they couldn't find someone crazy enough to, to want to come back to a company as a captain <laughs> with twenty with twenty five men working every single tour. <laughs> that had to be insanity, man. How how long was the second truck there? Like uh, I, you know, I actually don't know. 60, they were it was sixty eight to set like seventy three. Oh yeah, they were there. there quite a while. Charlie, I still remember Charlie Gardner was the captain. He was sitting on a milk crate when I came from from vacation. They put them in while I was on. I came in, he was sitting on a milk crate with a typewriter on another milk crate, typing a report out. He was the captain of 1032. I immediately invited, got him into the office, my office. We turned around all the furniture and we shared a half a desk each in the thing. <laughs> with the, wow. Anyhow, it was, it, it was just yeah, crazy. So there was only, there's only one bathroom in that, the office 
the the uh, truck offices on one side doesn't have a bathroom. It has like a little hallway that goes yeah, into the engine. And then they, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, we had, had to get along good with the guy in the engine company. Otherwise, you couldn't take a pee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Chief, I don't know if you know this. I was a lieutenant there in, in the engine and in the truck. So yeah. what, what, we, many, what years was that now? Just uh, I'm embarrassed to say. I was there from 2002 to 2009. Oh, 2009. Yeah. Every so, fight in 1989. <laughs> <laughs> you were still going to, uh, I will, I will to tell you this. It's still crazy at that time. <laughs> it's still crazy there. Just, uh, oh, it was. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still crazy. And that yeah. was after my time because I got out in August of 2001, right before the town. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so I just uh, missed you there, my friend. Oh, anyway. but I, the best part about having the hallway there is I have a story with, you know, I was in the engine at the time and we started doing EMS and we started doing a lot of EMS over there, right? And I would, oh, yeah. the beep, you know, I would come up from an EMS run, the beep boop would go off and I would hear the truck officer go, <laughs> you know, like laughing. <laughs> and I would throw the stapler through the hallway, you know, at him. And then I would come back from a run, literally take the, you know, the, the ticket, throw it on the, on the, t on the, table and just sit on the bed or you know something i'd hear boo -doo, and you go zms and i hear <laughs> you know, because the and i'm like i gotta get out of this engine i gotta get over to the truck you're a good doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. i can't do it anymore oh, you know? how, how did it work with 103 one and two it would just alternate runs yeah yeah one yeah one when you're up they were they were first doing over your second do so 103 one was always 103 one but they were first or second do. We were always uh, Charlie Gardner was 1032 permanently, but he would then take we, we alternate between first and second do truck. And and you know something? There were days when both trucks were involved and they still relocated the third truck wow. into the area. We were both what they were just unbelievable days. Uh, just un I mean firewise, I'm talking about. Right. Firewise. Chief, the, the second rig that was in it was in a cage? Where was it? What was that? Was no, it in the it firehouse? Was, it was in our quarters. It was piggyback, yeah, huh? really. Piggyback. One in oh, front oh, of the yeah. other. Oh yeah, yeah. Piggyback, yeah. Oh, we moved like, everything like, around. Uh, like hardly move. Butts to nuts. You could hardly move. It was <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was just, just crazy, you know. Yeah, and they just, sent the fill in. The guys were we short and like that. They just sent people from headquarters, and we got some sort of very strange people. By the way, I must say, one guy. They, they, Still they, going they, on. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he came into the kitchen area, and you know the firefighters—they're all very collegial. They hang together and they're joke, insulting one another. And he was sitting in a corner, maybe 30, 40 feet away, at the far end of the kitchen. And I asked him, "I said, how's he doing?" He said, "Oh, he doesn't talk to anybody." So what do you mean? Doesn't he said just sits over there and he uh, reads a book? He said, "I said, do you eat no one." Yeah, yeah. Oh, he does. Comes out. Does he make all the runs? Yeah, he makes the runs. He's not drinking, is he? What's the hell with it? Leave him alone. Oh, yeah. Quiet man. That's all. He's John yeah. Wayne, the quiet man. Yeah. How, so oh, how, how many jobs that. would you go on a busy night? How many jobs would you go to on a night? There'd be literally we'd go out 25, 30 <laughs> times, and we'd get two or three workers out of that. Wow. Uh, out, of, out of that, and uh, it was uh, it was just and and we had choices. I'd roll into a fire and, and look down the block and see a fire. I'd look the other way and see a fire. And I'd tell the Brooklyn dispatcher, he'd say, uh, take the one over on so and so. He'd dispatch another alarm for the place down the That's block. Crazy man. Yeah, it was just it absolutely was just, crazy. You just can't unless you if you really went through that. It's hard for you to even begin to imagine the, the, the heavy fire. And the guys just kept working. And when they were hurt, I'm talking about when they were hurt. They right. still work. They still work. They just yeah. kept going. And I, you had nothing. I mean, you had nothing between. You know what you were wearing was nothing, right? No, what nothing the rig, was, no, what tools no. you had was nothing. The no, rigs no, were no, bare no. bones, right? You had nothing. nothing I mean, look, at, you have nothing. Nope. nope. Yeah. Wow, look at that nothing. picture. Sorry, man. yeah, that's I was trying to pull up before uh, Ronnie just sent it. Wow. To me. Yeah, that's there's an open rig that awesome. made it easier for them to throw bricks at you. Walk <laughs> <laughs> the roof. We had a cop in the seven five precinct. I still remember his name, Willie Pastruli. and he rode the, the on the timetable of my rig. Literally rode on it uh, the thing. And then when they were throwing Molotov cocktails and sash weights off the roof, Willie would take shots. He'd see splinters or the corners flying off. Oh, he said, New York City cop. I said, I really, I'm, the wild west. Him in the, I'm in, the, in the, the, the front portion, care portion, I should say. I said, I got to get the hell out of this place. Holy <laughs> shit. How many years did you do that, Chief? 
I put in there, let me see, 63, 60, lieutenant captain, six years. Six That's years. Enough. Probably was, six of the busiest years ever. Was Frank Poser there at that time? Yeah, yeah. Frank Poser was there. Yeah. I just yeah. heard, uh, I just saw on our group text, we have a group text. I think he just, he's in Florida. I think he just broke his hip or something like that. Oh, uh, did was, he? Guys were yeah, saying, Frank was right. a stranger. He was a big guy and all muscles. He liked to lift weights and stuff, but he had this high piping voice. Hello there. <laughs> Yeah, it was like Mike Tyson. His voice, it, it didn't go with his body. It didn't go with his look, right? But it was only later on, when I was long gone, that they said P-O-S-A, Pride of Sheffield Avenue. Right. They, when Frank was working with me, they never, never, ever uh, used that, that acronym, you know, for Pride of Sheffield Avenue. But good, another good man, by the way. Really good person, Frank. Wow. Yeah, he was yeah, one man. of the guys I had the pleasure of working with. He taught me how to cut a roof with an axe and there was no such thing as a saw. You don't need the saw. Here's an axe, young kid. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was awesome. That's freaking Frank awesome Bosa. stuff. Tommy Neary was one of my firemen there in the uh, three. Tommy, I mentioned to Ronnie not long ago, he, he was, I think he was the first guy to win the James Gordon Bennett medal twice at the time. Twice. Yeah. Been yeah. Best, and, but at that yeah. time, he just passed away, Tom. By the I was yeah, just say, he recently passed away, right? Yeah. Terrific guy. Terrific guy. Yeah, chief. You know what I want to ask you? When when did you find time to do all this studying? Like when when did you find? I mean, you're working a couple of jobs. You got a big family. Yeah. Right? When, when were you studying in the firehouse? Were you doing at home? Yeah. What were you doing? I had a chance to study in the firehouse. I studied at home. My wife was very understanding. I just go upstairs, take a. Uh, I was smoking cigars in those days. Take a couple of cigars with me, and close the bedroom door. Sit in the chair. Put the light on and sit. And I'd study. I studied mostly at home and stuff. Keep it down. Your falls upstairs studying. <laughs> and I just want to add, by the way, he was the top of every list yeah. that he took. I have to say, I just I well, take a lot of pride in that. And, and I owe that to the Sisters of Mercy, the Sisters of Charity, <laughs> and yes. to the Vincent. I went to St. John's Preparatory in Brooklyn, Vincentian Fathers. And let me tell you something. You, you get the ruler? They punch you. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the, it's like a cool thing to <laughs> They were they were tough people, but it, what a superb education I got. Was and that was, the one on Lewis Lewis Avenue? Who was what? Was that on Lewis Avenue? Lewis Avenue, yes. Oh yeah. I had a yeah. friend who was a priest there. I used to uh, you know, move his furniture for him and stuff like that. He was yeah, there for I, a long I, time. I, I knew all of them very well. I worked in the, after after class at St. John's Prep. I got a quarter of an hour. I walked across the street to the priest house. It was the the the, the, the home of the Vincentian Fathers on the Eastern Seaboard. And they paid me a quarter of an hour to work the switchboard. And, and I did my homework while I was there at the board. And if I had problems, the priests were constantly coming past the thing. I'd ask them. They'd help me with my homework. So I was the only person around getting paid 25 cents an hour and getting help from his own teachers. Yeah. <laughs> when they weren't punching in the mouth, anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually saw that. I think I'll take the ruler. I don't know. I shouldn't, give his, I shouldn't give his name away, but Father Hansberger. One of the guys one day told him, you can go to hell. He went down and slapped that guy, knocked him ass over tea kettle. Yeah, yeah. And he, that, was the, that was the last time anyone told Father Hunter. No, no, that that's that's the last. This is what you have to do, Chief. You got to, sometimes you got to, you know, yeah. show. Uh, yeah, it's it's right there. Right. Right. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. Uh, going down the basement. All right. So, look, we're still in the 60s. 1966, you promoted to captain. Assigned to Division I mean, Ten, you, you bounced through there, right? You, you said you didn't have a spot. Did you find a spot? Yeah, I, I got a call from the division commander who asked me to come back, and uh, he said, "O'Hagan, Commissioner John O'Hagan, promised me I can have anybody I want." And we put the third unit in, and he said, "You, you, you, you you're familiar with Sheffield Avenue. I really want you to come back." And he was such a wonderful man, Charlie Dresher, the commander of the 15th, that I couldn't turn him down. Uh, so I did go back as a as a, a captain. Wow, of the I did not. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be for that. I, I I did believe in moving around and getting as much experience. But he asked me, and uh, I, I just felt I owed him. I owed him, and I and I went. Wow, Cap lieutenant and captain in one hundred three during the war years. Wow, look at this. This crew, is his man. photo to yeah. promoted to captain. <clears throat> yeah, believe it or not, these two guys on my right and left right now. This <laughs> this this is those guys there. Look at this. <laughs> A point wow. <laughs> and and that young lady that's right to the next of uh, Bob Lowry, the commissioner, is my daughter Kathy. That young girl, she's right. 70 years old. 
<laughs> That's crazy. Yep. Yep. That's Good freaking times. crazy. Good times. Yeah. Insane. So you went back to 103. Yes, That's... I did. It, it, you didn't it, have it, you didn't have enough. No, but it had one <laughs> it had one benefit. After I was there about a week or two and going back to the, doing eight thousand runs or whatever it was, I started studying again. <laughs> Gave I said, leave. I got to get the Mick Battalion chief. Get the hell out of here. Holy so I did. I did. I, got, I, I, I passed that test, too. So yeah, and where did you end up getting the sign? Back in East New York. 3-9, <laughs> right? Yeah. Didn't he go to the 3-9? That's crazy. Yeah, 3-9 Battalion. Excellent. Some I can't team. even, honestly, Chief, we got a lot of guys. I yeah. mean, a lot a lot of guys. But when I think about how what you could have been seeing, I know what I saw yeah. in 2002, right? Like, you know. Like Rich and, and like what those guys saw in the in the eighties and nineties, oh, yeah. right? It was yeah. crazy. I, but I cannot even imagine what your eyes have seen over the last, you know, from the sixties and seventies in that in that area. It's absolutely I can't. I can't you it's, know, it's, it's funny you're saying that because neither can I. I. I actually was there, and I can't believe it sometimes. And occasionally, when I do run into some of the guys that were there with me, mm-hmm. I asked, "Did we really? Did that really happen to us?" It seems it almost seems impossible. So I have a hard time believing it, but but it, it did happen, and we were there. We were there. And by the time you came back as captain, it had to be even you know more more vacant then. I mean, oh, it had to yeah, have it, been. It was just unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. You know, that's that's like when we get a couple. Of, we had a couple of guys from the Bronx that were in, you know, seventeen and you know thirty one. Yeah, who who at was the, the time. guy that we had who was right in Germany right after World War One, and he was in yeah. the Bronx, and he said. It looked worse in the Bronx than it did in post war <laughs> in Germany. Berlin at the in bombings. Bronx. Yeah, that was yeah. that was uh, Sasson. Was that Sasson? Oh yeah, that was just recently, right? He was just yeah. like, I came back. He's just like, yeah. I can't even believe what I was looking at. Like, you know, yeah. in, in, yeah. in the South Bronx, worse, it, it worked yeah. worse to the South Bronx than it did in yeah. post World War II Germany. Yeah, <laughs> I wound up years later. I went to I went to a thousand fires and burned down half of East New York, I guess. And what they did was tore them down, and they put up an East New York Industrial Park. And when they opened it up, Mayor Koch was there that day. He came, and they invited the Brooklyn Borough Commander and myself and the police commander from Brooklyn to be there. And we went. And uh, the mayor was very kind. Koch, he walked over and thanked us for coming. And I told him, I said, Mr. Mayor, I said, I was here when I helped bring down all these buildings. I said, <laughs> I said, so I felt that I was here for the, uh, for the agony. I might as well be here for the ecstasy. <laughs> he, t- he turned around to a, a guy with one of his aides. He said, write that down. I'm using it in my next speech. <laughs> Somebody in the chat says you're an outstanding ping pong player. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you play in the 3-9? They said the Chief was a good ping pong playing the 3-9 when they were in with 236. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Dick Frayne, uh, he always wanted to beat me, and he never could beat me. Richie Frayne, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dick Frayne. Good guy. Is that the that's it? Is that Dick's father? Is that, yeah. that his father? Yes, I work yes. with a Dick Frayne. Yeah, yeah, I work yeah, with a Dick yeah, Frayne. Yeah, that's the father. Yeah. You, you know what they used to say to him all the time, Chief? What? The guys used to say, hey, you got any gum on your dick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about right. Said, it's about right. <laughs> so you did three years as a captain before you got promoted to battalion chief. Yeah, 69. Yeah. 60. All right, Ruffy, you were finally born. We're one years old. Woo, I'm one. Woo, Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I think I told Ronnie before, I'll just told you very quickly. Uh, I was a firefighter, lieutenant captain, Brooklyn. Now I'm battalion chief. They sent me to Manhattan, the 7th Battalion, 3rd Division, Bantan, right? And uh, Patty Conless was a division commander of the 3rd Division. He had been my battalion chief in Brooklyn when he was in the 4th Floor. And he called me up to the office and he, he said to me, Matty, I know you can put fires out on the fifth floor, up to the fifth floor of a building, but what will you do when you have a fire on the 60th or 70th floor? Yes. I said to him, I said, well, tell you what, Chief, I'll put the thing on the elevator, bring it down to the fifth floor, and I'll put it out. That's he it. got That's out of his it. chair, put his hand across the desk, and said, welcome to the third division. <laughs> Hell yeah, I don't know about those 60 stories, Chief. I think I'm out yeah. on that stuff, yeah. you know? Well, you like subcellars. Yeah, yeah, subcellars. Oh, too. Sub-sellers. Oh, yeah. Please. I'm out on I I had a sub sub a sub sub seller. Oh, that's <laughs> even his favorite. That's his really I favorite one. Said, Matty, you've been here for five hours. What's the problem? I said we have a problem. We have a fire. We can't put out. I was I told my aide. I, I was thinking of doing the, the, the division one. I was division one to, to <clears throat> Manhattan. 
you know, we're 10 8. It's it, it, a fire under control. No, no, we can't put it out. I'm going back to quarters. There's a storage area beneath a sub cellar. Screw that. I never saw that in my entire life. Manhattan, you saw the strangest things downtown, downtown Manhattan. Strangers. Yeah, yeah I'm out on sub cellars, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to play that next uh, next uh, show. We'll yeah, be in the yeah. subseller song. Oh my gosh! Oh, so how did actually, you like Manhattan, Chief? Did you like it? Besides I that, loved it. I actually got to love it. Believe it or not, uh, I, I, I was so t- attached to Brooklyn, like with the guys and like that. It was almost like leaving home, sort of. Mm. But it was probably a, a great, great move because there was a terrific bunch of guys I ran into. They were all helpful to me. And I'll tell you, it was it was a world experience you got over there. It was unbelievable. You used to turn the corner in Brooklyn and there'd be fire out the windows. People look like they were getting ready to jump, right? And you, you, you know, you had a fire. You smelled the smoke even. Manhattan, you'd get out, walk into the lobby of a building. There'd be guys selling newspapers over the other side, <laughs> ordering a cup of coffee. And you stand in the lobby and all of a sudden, the elevator door would open up. Four people would fall out on the floor. <laughs> And a big belch of smoke would follow them off the <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. You have no yeah. idea, right? And yeah, the fire. Is, it's, a fire it's not even there. It's two building the lobby, You can sit down, read the newspaper, and have your coffee. You know, that's so it's, true. You, know, you, know, so you never know what you were going to get in Manhattan. That, that, and of course, I went to Sixth Battalion. They had tenements. They had high rise. They had piers. Mixed one battalion. The, the mix there was unbelievable. You know, right? That you know, one was. It was like in because that was during the fiscal crunch there, right? In the uh, yes. 70s. Yeah. So was the city run down and shitty at that time? Yes, it was. And and the, one of the saddest moments ever, ever in my estimation, I mean, other than deaths and serious injuries of men, where they laid off firefighters in New York City. I, I always thought that was a terrible thing. Some of those guys didn't come back. They didn't all come back, you know. Uh, we had a young firefighter. I was in the 3-9. He was in quarters. And they laid him off. And uh, he was a great firefighter. I, I thought he was a terrific. He loved the job. And uh, he went back to his old job. And they took him back in his old job only if he would promise the boss that he wouldn't leave if he got called back to the fire department. He gave the guy his word. Guess what? We called him back. He said, I can't come back. I gave the guy my word. He, wow. We never called him wow. back. There were, other, there were other guys. And it never, never should have happened, I mean, to lay off men like that, you know? All right. Ruffy, what that? Who said that one time? Um, it was a guy who was on in the seventies. He says he reported to the house watch, and the guy, the senior man, told him two things you never have to worry about in this job: uh, layoffs and women coming on the job. Yeah, yeah. that was early. <laughs> yeah, Listen, I, I was the, uh, the liaison for the women firefighters, so you can see I had an enviable job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the jobs the fire commissioner gave me. He, he said, "You're, you're going to be the liaison between the fire department and the women." Oh, and, oh goodness and, gracious! And that's, you know. Hey, you Chief, have to, you know, you have to give somebody to check your, your dinner every night? Hey, you take a bite of that first. Yeah. <laughs> See if it's that's all right. a, that's yeah. a common uh, uh, scenario that happens on the show, too, with the guys, yeah. you know, like yourself, where, you know, they, they're working in the ghetto, they're working in busy, yeah. busy, busy places, and then they yeah. get promoted, mm-hmm. and then they go to Manhattan, yeah, and they think mm-hmm. a certain way. <laughs> In there, you know, and until yeah, they get yeah. there and, and work with the guys, like yeah. you just said, and you know, it was just an eye-opening thing for you, oh, yeah. and you know, you you enjoyed it more than you probably thought you would have. If uh, oh yeah, Ronnie was know. saying that yeah. he was booking firefighter here, and he, he wound up in Manhattan, right, Ronnie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, oh, that Ronnie was, was a boss. That's that's scary. He was a boss. Ronnie was a boss. boss. Holy shit! I'll tell you a little <laughs> short, quick Manhattan story. I'll make it fast too. I, I was covering the 8th Battalion, one of the, the, the battalions. I was covering 51st between 3rd and Lexington. And the day I was there, they, they wanted me to go over and check out the cathedral. They would do for an annual inspection or semi-annual. And I walked in, and I, all I ever saw at St. Patrick's was pure stone. I thought it was made of poured of just pure concrete. Little did I know, I took stairs up into the Cockroft area, and there was like three lumber yards up there. Thousands and thousands of feet of lumber. We are. No, no, no sprinklers, no silent sprinklers, no, not, you know, I was, I was absolutely shocked. I mean, it, it, I went back to quarters, the 8th Battalion, and Ed Lally was the commander. I said to him, Ed, I said, do you realize that, the, he said, yeah, I know, I know. I said, anyone ever think about putting a sprinkler order in on the cathedral? He stared at me in shock and he said, you want to get excommunicated? 
<laughs> that was his comment to me. <laughs> I guess we are lucky. Never had anything in there, right? Hey, look oh. at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, yeah. Brent, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. shit, yeah. That, yep. That's St. Patrick's in France. That's their St. Patrick's. Yeah. Did, they have, did they ever put the sprinkler up there, Chief? Do you know? Oh, oh no, no. But no. I was thinking they, 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 they've gotten some real advances to it. They could, they probably did put stuff up more modern, the tech, you know, dry right, right, right. Yeah. sprinklers, smoke, smoke detected sprinklers and stuff. They, 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 they've come a long way. I'm sure that's protected now, by the way, especially since Notre Dame burned. They, they, they've done something. I know they right. have. Yeah. But we hope. Anyway, so uh, where were we? So we go to 76, and then you're promoted to deputy chief, and you're still in Manhattan, Division One. Yeah, so when got... they sent us, by the way, they sent us their MBO, they called it management by objective. And it's hard to believe, but after all the years, and your deputy chief, we were on probation, it was a new system they had. You were on probation for the year. So I had a number of people, friends of mine, said, hey, Matty, you, you got to be insulted. I mean, all the time you got in a job and you were, and they're putting you on. I said, listen, you can do the job or they can bounce you. I said, personally, I, I don't see any problem with it. You should be doing the job. But anyhow, they, we didn't have to, the good news, I didn't have to cover. I went to the first division. And and I, I got to, when I left there, by the way, I was the division commander in 1970. Uh, Wow. Uh, 76. I was there 76 and 78. I went down to become the executive of the, the chief uh, chief brothers and Gus Speakman, well, by the way, who was one of the most wonderful men I ever met in my entire life. Gus Speakman, an orphan, joins the army at 18 years old, goes all through the wars of Europe and stuff like that, comes back, GI Bill of Rights, college, studies, gets on a list, goes right up the list. Lieutenant, Captain, BC, right up the list, all the way to the top. And, and he was the commissioner that asked me, I didn't want to go to headquarters. I loved the first division, but I just couldn't turn Gus Speakman down. I, I had such tremendous admiration for that man. Yeah. I think he was a 20 he, Harlem he firefighter, one of the right? Kindest, the, the, the fairest men I ever met. Right. I'll put it that way. And, and well, anyhow, I, I, I did go down there, but uh, it was it was reluctant. I, 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 I loved the first division. I really, however, I went. That's, you know, right. that's, that's that. That's, yeah, my, my dad drove Beekman for a little while. He says a very nice oh, he man. Did, huh? Yeah, very nice man. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, th I think he was a Hall of Firefighter, right, Gus Beekman? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Gus knew his fires and stuff. Yep. <clears throat> he was a terrific, terrific guy. Okay. Yeah, terrific guy. Anyhow, he was. Tell him uh, the story about how you went out to dinner and he was from Bed Stuy, or you were living in Bed Stuy and he was fighting out on a sailboat. Oh no, that's Dr. Jones. Cyril Jones was reminder. Oh. <laughs> Cyril Jones, the chief medical officer. Uh, he was, uh, and his wife Rose. There was another couple of beautiful people. Uh, I, I shared the, the floor with the medical division. Manhattan Borough Command shared the entire second floor over 20 truck. Half was the medical division, half was Manhattan Borough Command. And uh, we went to a Columbia affair one night, and I happened to be sitting next to my wife and I with uh, Rose and, uh, and Cyril. And uh, she asked, where were you raised? And my, by the way, uh, the, the, uh, the road, 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 in case you don't remember, you guys, she goes way back. Cyril and his wife were black, you know? And uh, she said to my wife, where were you raised? She said, in bed sty So there was like a moment's silence. And I said, well, where were you raised? She said, and I think it was Cuscob, Connecticut, or Greenwich, Connecticut, or someplace very fancy. <laughs> and there was another dead silence. And I said, I said, does anyone else here realize that we were probably switched at birth? <laughs> and, and Dr. Dr. Jones Cyril, who was a sweet, sweet man. He said, don't pay no attention to him, Rose. He's a troublemaker. <laughs> uh, God, pull up the picture of uh, President Carter. Let's tell that Are story. you ready for that one? Okay. Oh, Carter, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll try to it's get that the, quickly. The, the people don't are not aware. Yeah, there's the photo I see being shown now. Uh, the, the presidents come into uh, to Manhattan. It's quite a thing uh, when they come. And we're notified. And uh, I was in the first division. Of course, the deputy comes down. So it was a deputy chief, first division, battalion chief, first battalion, three engines, two ladder comes, rescues, uh, in close approach suits, hoses stretched across the, 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 the street to meet helicopters. And he comes in by with three helicopters. You never know which one he's in. The first one lands, a bunch of Marines jump out with rifles and stuff. And then he'll come with the second third. 
Anyhow, I get a call from John O'Rourke, who was a battalion chief at the time. And he said to me, Matty, we got a problem down here. He said, it's what is it? Come on down. I got down to Wall Street and uh, the Secret Service guy there said, they, we'd like you to move across the street because you're in the way of all the photographers and newsmen. They can't, our guys six foot three, masks, you know, close approach suits. They formed a wall almost. So I, I said, you know, we're no, no good across the street. He said, the White House press office asked me to tell you to move. I said, listen, we can't move. We have to stay here because we, seconds count, not minutes. I said, I, I, either we, we, we take up totally, take up all the rigs and just leave, I said, or, or we're just going to have to stay. He said, all right, I'll get, I'll, I'll get to the White House and tell them what you said. Reports go all the way up and down the line, up to the State Department, everything else like that. Months go by, we get a call. President Carter is coming in again. We get down to the scene, the same Secret Service guy that tried to push us off the, 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 the heliport said, uh, President Carter is going to land in a few minutes. He wants to see you. <laughs> John O'Rourke, and I said to this John there, by the way, right by Carter's nose, if you're looking at it, the white hat, the other white hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was later chief of the department, of course, John. But anyhow, he was PC. And I said to him, John, I think we're going to get our ass kicked here. So uh, it, it, with that, the helicopter lands, Carter comes out carrying his suit. You see, he's got it over his shoulder. He's carrying his own suit. And he comes walking over to us and he said, Gentlemen, I understand there was a misunderstanding the last time we were here. And I want you to know that Rosalind and I truly appreciate the protection you give us and that you have a lot more important things to do than wait on us. Whatever procedures you want to follow down here, you follow. No Thank shit. you. And he walked off. I turned to O'Rourke and I said to him, John, you do realize we just got an apology from the President of the United, the United States. States. Oh, my God. And, and, and we got the photo. And there's the photo. 99 yesterday. Carter, 99 years He's old. Still yesterday. going, that guy, huh? Still going. That guy going. had brain cancer. He's beating everything, that guy, man. Yeah. He's still Amazing. going. It's like... That's a pretty good story, man. Apologies. That's a good yeah, and he's story. He's still apologizing to people. How, how many presidents did you meet over there, Chief? All the reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many presidents did you meet? Did you work there for a while? Yeah, right. I, I, yeah. I should, I'll make that as short as it be. President uh, Carter. Uh, President Carter, I'm sorry. President Ford, Gerald Ford. He got off the helicopter and he walked over to us on his own. No, no nothing at all. And he shook hands. And the guy from Rescue Company had a camera. And he took a photo of Jerry Ford and I, Michelle Ford, President Ford, and I shaking hands. And I, I, and he said, you know, nice night. And he left. He jumped in his limo, whatever. And next thing you know, a week goes by, two weeks go by. I call Rescue One. What happened with the, ah, the, the picture never came out, he said. So he, goes, he says to me, the rescue guy, he said, don't worry about it, Chief. Next time he comes in, we'll get another shot. I never saw Gerald Ford the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I did meet him and shake his hand. So two I did presidents. Meet, I met two presidents, yeah. Good stuff. Hell yeah, that's awesome. And you got an apology from one. And I, yeah. Yes, and, and I have proof. Oh, and Southern I have a load of reports that went with it, by the way. Yeah. They're in a box in my basement someplace at home. There's a number of reports went up and down the ladder between mm. all this thing, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, it's amazing. See, the chief did a little poking. He poked Jack, a couple Jack of people. He was a Manhattan yeah. Borough community. Yeah. He stood behind us. Gus Beekman stood behind us all the way along. The mayor stood behind us and everything, all the way up. And, and and you know they, they they backed our stance on this thing here and 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 of course President Carter did eventually too so which was which was great. Yeah, oh, God, so any other pictures? Uh, we have a few with some stories. We have uh, we can right. go to this one. Oh yeah, braving the flames. Yeah, it, you know what? I, it was it, Peter Michaels, who was a psychologist at Bellevue Hospital. He compiled that book, uh, and it wasn't written by any of us. Uh, he just conducted interviews with all of us. Uh, I think I'm the last chapter, chapter 15 in that book. Uh, but it became a bestseller, believe it or not. And Peter Michaels, unfortunately, he died some years ago, a couple of years back. But a nice, nice man. And uh, it, it, very interesting, the book. I haven't looked at it in a long time and all like that. But it, it, it suddenly became a bestseller. And there was a number of people. John Vigiano wrote an article there. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, a couple of them. Gus Beekman, the commissioner, he wrote an oh, no, oh, yeah, artist. What a sweetheart. One of the finest men I ever met in my life, John John Vigiano. And he, John's gone. I always say today, John, with Joe and John, his two sons that died, 
John's not crying and suffering anymore. He's with Joe and John today. Yeah, I, yeah. I guarantee yeah, yeah. you. God bless. Yeah, God bless him and his sons. Yeah. Wonderful people. At any rate. That was a that was a great book. A, a, a 176 role. guy, a long time, right? The cap. Yeah, uh... yeah. John was a probie when I went to 103 as lieutenant, by the way. So that's right. He was a 103 yeah. guy. I like to mention one thing about that book. Yeah. One thing about that book. My father had the last chapter, and I asked him a couple of times, "How did you end up with the last chapter?" And what did he say? Because he sharp as a tack. They saved the best. The book best for last. <laughs> I lied. Exactly, exactly I lied. Like of, of course, he lied again. <laughs> I lied again. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. I got a couple more. Sorry about how you making terrible spaghetti. Did you make terrible spaghetti? Hold on. Oh God. <laughs> the first, the first story in the book. His grandson. Peter Michaels asked me, "How was your beginning in your firehouse?" I said, "Very badly. I got a bad start. How come?" I said. They, they took turns cooking in the firehouse at that time when I was there. And uh, I didn't cook, uh, you know, and I asked my wife, and she said, I'll ah, take a couple of packets of spaghetti, throw it in boiling water, stir it up. You get a couple of jars of ragu. Or <laughs> water, ragu. And pour it, in. She said, yeah, do it. it. It sounded simple enough. Even I could do that. So I'm in the firehouse. We've got this huge pot the firehouses have. I got the thing loaded up with a couple of gallons of water, boiling through three or four packages of spaghetti. We had a deputy chief in quarters and we had deputy commissioner's driver in quarters. So there was a number of people there. Uh, and uh, I put it on and I, I started a few times and the alarm came in. I ran out, jumped on the back of the rig and uh, we were gone Left for on. an hour or so. Shit so boiling I, the whole time? I forgot to turn the heat off. And when I grabbed the pot on the side with a towel and I turned it over, it fell out in one big blob. It's just a true story. It, con it congealed, and it was solid. And we had a big uh, a commercial slicer like they have in delis. No and, way. And I put it on that, and I sliced it. And Slice I laid it the sauce. And I got the guys now, one by one. They all took a look at it. One guy tasted it. They walked over and threw it in the garbage. <laughs> One guy said to me, it was a quarter, by the way, a quarter for the, the meal. That's how much they paid. A pay. quarter. Oh, my yeah, God. Quarter. Yeah. Because he went to give me Benny Teitelbaum. He was the deputy commissioner's driver. I said, Benny, don't, you don't have to give me the money. I said, you know, because he threw it in the garbage. And, and he said to me, no, it's worth a quarter to, to learn not to ever eat with you again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, the division commander was pushing. Mike Bielman was the commander. 15th division. He came down, came down behind the guy, other guys. He was a little late. And he sits down, and I give him this thing. And he sits there, and he starts eating. He's eating it. It's like lasagna. Said, he said, what is this? He said, I said, it's a new a new pasta dish, Chief. He said, it's not bad. He said, do you have any more? I said, I, said, I have a lot more. What is <laughs> he, was, he was the only guy that, that ate that. I like it. <laughs> That's what I, that was, by the way, I didn't. I, you're going to be surprised by this, but they never asked me to cook again. Oh, <laughs> shocking. So, so you're the smartest guy in the firehouse then. That's it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff in the future. That's it, right? Good oh, stuff. Oh, man. Where are we, dude? I kind of got lost. Oh, 1978, June 24th, promoted to Deputy Assistant Chief of Department. Yeah, became the Executive Officer Chief of Department, Frank Brothers. That's the one where I said I really didn't want to go and leave the division, but I had such great respect for both Frank Brothers, the chief of the department, and for Gus Beekman. I, I, I really didn't feel I could turn him down, you know? I, so I did go. But I served in the staff, in the, the staff positions, executive officer, chief of the department, assistant chief of operations, uh, Brooklyn Borough Commander, and Manhattan Borough Commander. So I had four separate positions as a deputy assistant and assistant chief of the department. So anyhow, it turned out all right. It's just that I was... I was pretty happy in the field. I could have just as well stayed, you know? Wow. And how long did you have to put in that? Oh, two years. Yeah, I put two years to the executive office, the chief of the department, and uh, I put the, another year there. I stayed on at the John Hart's request, chief of the department, he succeeded Frank Brothers, and, and at Joe, Joe Hines' the request to stay on uh, to, because I was the only one that was familiar with headquarters. Everybody else had left. So I did. I stayed on, and I, I worked as uh, – assistant chief of operations for another year and then finally they let me free and they let me go to brooklyn and from brooklyn into uh, manhattan and that's where i ended my career so but it was it was great it was great yeah 
Uh, yeah, that's wow, really look cool. at that. You really took my son. Holy shit. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's my headpieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah, John. My son John took a photo. That's downstairs on that wall. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. a you see you see the thing saying assistant chief? Uh-huh. Down in, I was in Panera's in Florida and I had a shirt on at the Friday pop, and then there was a lady having a cup of coffee outside, and she saw the shirt and she said, Were you in the Friday pop? And I said, Yes, I was. She said, What was your rank? I said, I was an assistant chief of the department. And he said, Oh, you work for my son. I looked at her, I said, Really? I said, Who was your son? And she named some battalion chief. So I said, the battalion chief. She said, oh, yeah, you're an assistant chief. You were his assistant. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I learned a lesson after that. I used to say, assistant chief of department. <laughs> so you, Not uh, assistant chief. Assistant chief of department. <laughs> I think yeah, we yeah. were talking, too. You said that uh, they offered you the chief of department? Yeah, they, they did. I got a couple of times I offered like that. No disrespect for the office, but uh, I, I, I uh, my wife was ill at the time. She wasn't feeling well. And uh, I, I had put a lot of time in, uh, in, 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 in I, I always felt, I don't like the word say steal, but I, I stole a lot of time from my family too to do some of the jobs that they gave me. I always accepted the jobs and I liked them too, by the way. I'm not going to kid you and say I didn't, but I must have been on 26 different committees and stuff. And I worked for the chief of the department and I saw how difficult. I visited Frank Crothers in Syosset Hospital bleeding ulcers. Visit John Hart, bleeding ulcers in, in Huntington Hospital. I visit John O'Rourke at his home, who's having a nervous breakdown. I work with Bobby Butler, who was on the edge and fighting with. It, it, the job can get to you. Tremendous demands. Everyone thinks sure, that you yeah. just get into that job and coast. That's not the way I saw it. I saw it firsthand, right next to it. And my, from my own personal view, I, I wanted, I was only 51 years old. I wanted to last in the job for another 10 years. I knew I'd never make that as chief of the department. And I liked the job I had, so I just, I stayed. Never had immense regret, by the way. I was going to ask you if you could do anything different whatsoever in your whole career. Would you have done anything different? Oh, gosh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I don't think so. No, I really don't think so. I think it took a certain natural course, and I flowed with it. I never had regrets about a lot of things, like the chief of the department or other things and so forth that went on, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, didn't you go for a job to the commissioner? Oh yeah, I did. I got. I did get an interview from the uh, uh, for the commissioner's job. Uh, I knew I wouldn't get it, by the way. But it was kind that they. I thought it was an honor to be to get the interview with John Jay, uh, and uh, uh, Charlie Rivera got the job. And uh, I, I knew Charlie. Wow, you would have been, that would have been awesome if you, you became very funny. And I, I, I think it kind of. Charlie's well, gone now, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way. But I, came, I think it kind of ruined his life. I mean, I know he had a lot, a lot of problems with the staff chiefs and all kinds. I was out of the job, by the way. So it came secondhand to me. But maybe that was another way God moved towards me not getting that a, a job, you know? But right. I, I think I knew I wasn't getting it when I went there. If you can understand that. It sounds crazy. But it was, it was uh, Pat Murphy was the deputy police commissioner. I knew him well. And he sat on the board. He recommended me, by the way. A police... Not the fire, police, the police guy. <laughs> oh, is that He's right? He's the guy for the chief of the department. It was good. It was, it got, there, was a, there was a guy sitting in, in, in the office there when I walked in, and he said, are you here for the PC's job? I said, no, I'm here for the fire. He introduced himself to me. His name was uh, Brown. He, he got the job as PC that day, by the way. They called him out of town Brown. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was never around. He was always he was never around. That's freaking awesome, man. He was I never love around. It. But the end of, I'll tell you, the, inter <laughs> the, the interview was worth it. Out of town was, Brown. There were 13 people there <laughs> from all kinds of important organizations throughout the city, you know, citizens groups and so forth. And they, they asked you some really tough, hard questions, you know? And I, 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 I thought I did. Uh, what's his name? Dr. Lynch from John Jay. He came later on, told me, he said, Matty, you did very well, he said. You did very well. So I didn't embarrass the department, by the way. So that was nice. <laughs> Charlie got the job, and I'm not sure after seeing the problems he had, that maybe it wasn't. Yeah, maybe it was God sent. God was looking oh. out for me then, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Directs he directs you down strange paths sometimes, guys. You have to, you have to yeah. understand that. Hey, hey, Chief, did you ever think, I mean, I mean, looking back, I mean, nobody ever does, I, I wouldn't imagine, but did you ever think you'd make it as far and have such a successful career as, as you did when you when you first started, right? From a, 
Never. It's crazy, right? When you think yeah, of your past. Absolutely crazy. And by the way, I said this before, and I hope you understand I mean this. A piece of this is not even to my credit. For some reason or other, I have no idea why, but I was born with like a photographic type of memory. I could, If I read something in, 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 a, in a book, or I made a note in a margin or a footnote or something, it would take six months, eight months, I could remember that thing. So when I was taking an exam, literally, when I took exams, I closed my eyes like this, and it would appear in front of me, the page. I, I literally used to get a feeling that's crazy. The monitor was going to come down and grab me and say, <laughs> well, you're cheating. You're cheating. You're born with blonde hair, six foot three or whatever. It had nothing to do with you. The memory was the same. <laughs> right. just, my father had it too, by the way. So it was, I guess, hereditary. I, I, yeah. I got a, I got a, uh, an excellent memory. And who are you again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to recognize these two guys on either side of it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Obviously, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because that was a low lieutenant. <laughs> At any rate, it was. Uh, no, no, it was. Uh, no, I never imagined. Go back to your thing. Absolutely yeah. never, never imagined. I, I tell you the truth. I always felt like, geez, I'm going to be the happiest firefighter in the world. I tell you what drove me. I needed the dough. I was constantly broke. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I got. I don't do it. Every promotion exam, I, 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 someone else is in school. Someone else is in college. Take another one. Take another one. Take another, As Richard said, you before, wanted us all to go to Catholic school. What can I, <laughs> what can I tell you? What can I tell you? If, they, so, if I had a bunch of kids that were atheists, I'd be a rich man today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are rich in other ways, too. I am. Um, I am. I absolutely. I, am. I, 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 and I know it, by the way. I, I'm so blessed. If you were to look blessed back on your th on your 37 years, Chief, where do you yeah. think like the sweet spot was for you? Like, man, that was probably the best time I had on my career. Well, I'm going to tell you a strange thing about that, too. I, I would say if you put it into a rank, it was battalion chief. I wrote the, the top mark in the deputies exam, but it took me seven years to get promoted from BC to DC to a, to a deputy chief. It was a court case that dragged on year after year after year. So I spent my longest time in the rank of battalion chief. And guess what? The rank I love. Why did I love that job? You were in command of your fires. 90, 95% of the fires, you had command. You were the guy that the, the, the bosses then, you know, at second alarm, they'd come in on your deputy. And even a few times they did come down on the thing. I knew them so well, the deputies. I got a, they very rarely bothered interfering much with what I was doing. Right, I, right, 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 right. But the reason I loved it most was that not only did you have command of the fire, but you still had contact with all your units. In other words, I still went in and out of the firehouse, sat, had coffee with the guys and talked to them. What's the problem, guys? What's going on here? What's wrong with that? So you could be part. I was sitting at that rank, which the BC's rank. It's a part of two worlds. It's really part of the workers and part of management. You are right in the middle, and you share in both of their, their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so it, mm -hmm. Anyhow, it turned out to be a blessing getting held up for seven years to court cases because oh. I, I loved that rank, and that was a happy time for me, by the way. Gonzo's giving you one of these. <laughs> Gonzo's yeah, oh, the yeah, chief. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gonzo's the chief. Yeah, Gonzo's the chief. In, in, strange, in, strange, in strange ways, you know. You take a look. You know all the paths. You guys did it. I know you did. You come to how many times you came to cross crossroads, pathways. Which way should I go? To the right or left? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. What would have happened had I taken the right lane instead of the left lane, and so forth? So, I wish I wish I could have done that with ex wives. I would have been in the whole. Different <laughs> 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 uh, you made it right there. Damn, it made it right Hey, you figured the third time would be a charm. It didn't, it didn't ruin your sense of humor, any. <laughs> you still got your sense of humor. Yeah. By the way, before I forget, thank you so much, you guys, for uh, and Ronnie sitting here with me. Thanks so much for. Uh, Allow me to talk to you tonight. Back Are some you place. kidding? This is the best. Honor, man. The best, it, stuff, best. Man. It, it really was. It really, especially have my two sons with me next to me over here. Really nice, you know. Yeah. I like the title assistant producer. Assistant producer. Yeah. I already gave producer. you a shout out. Don't get greedy over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> at, at, at any rate, so. hey chief, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask you if you wanted to talk about it. How, how long? Were you married? How long? I wanted to talk about your wife. Like yeah, my wife died years. thirty years ago, and I was oh, married man. forty-three years. Uh, when she died, 43. She was a beautiful, beautiful lady, lovely woman. 
I took her to the freshman. I told you St. John's Prep, Lewis Avenue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 14 years old. I took her to a freshman's hop. Was, uh, you guys, you guys don't know this, but it was a, it was a brown and white leather saddle shoes. They called them with the, nice. with the skirts and stuff. It was a freshman hop, 14, and I had to have a home at 10 o'clock. Started at eight. So we had a clock on the dot. 40 minutes to walk there. No cars, no nothing. <laughs> So you're yeah, hopping quick, man. And anyhow, but I had orders from my father. You'd be home at 10 o'clock. Nice. So anyhow, I took it to a freshman dance at 14. I had it home at 10 o'clock and stuff like that. And it uh, was the wind beneath your wings. Yeah, and and, and and wound up getting married. She was 21. I was 22. And we got married. Two dopey kids. And uh, and we we had a lot of good, good happy years. Let me yeah, you that. got uh, two, two. Is yeah, that her here? Is yeah, that her here? It is, John. John Hart. Good. No, that, that's your wife. Right? Once he was chief of department, I said, "John, please don't take this as an offense, but you're too nice to be chief of department." Mm -hmm. The reason I said it, I was in his office uh, talking to him, and a, 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 a deputy commissioner, a lady deputy commissioner, Godek, her name was G O D E K. I thought those were right. names, but I have to. She came in. She totally ignored me, like I wasn't even standing there talking to John, and she lit into John, who was the chief of department. And yelled at him and yelled at him. And then she steamed out. John was a smoker. John took a puff on his cigarette and just put it in the ashtray. As soon as she left, I said to him, John, what the hell is with that lady? He said, uh, she goes off the hinge. She, she'll calm down. Don't worry about it. I said, you know something? I said, if I was in there and she said that to me, and I said, well, I'd grab her by the back of the seat of the pants, her neck, <laughs> and I'd heave her out the goddamn door. <laughs> so he just, but he was, he was, he was, I meant it. He was just overly nice. John Hart was, she was department. By the way, he stepped down. The, the best speech I ever heard. Good, I mentioned myself that time. Remind him. <laughs> Original training, a promotion, with ceremony, whatever it was, went through all the routine and then said, I have an announcement to make that I'm stepping down as chief of department. And I looked down. I knew Marge's wife well. She was in the front. She had a handkerchief and she was wiping tears away from her eyes. And he said, Marge and I always wanted to grow old together. He said, well, we're growing old, but we're not growing old together, and I can't permit it anymore. So effective this Monday, I'm stepping down as chief of the department. We went back to deputy chief, 13th division. I thought it was the finest speech I ever heard, mm. and I think it was the best move John ever made. It, as I said, I visit bleeding ulcers in the hospital and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, being, getting home. I knew the aides. I knew all the chief of the department aides. And uh, one guy said to me, usually he gets home like at, at night. By the time I drive him out there to Huntington or whatever like that, it's 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock. I pick him up at 6.30 in the morning. He said he sleeps in the back of the car half the time. I mean, it was it was, it was was no life. There was no life. Anyhow, he, he stepped down, moved down to someplace in Florida, someplace down there, I forget where, had friends. Mm -hmm. and really, he's gone, so is, so is his wife. But they had some happy years together, thanks to him stepping down, you know? Good man, Excellent. good man, John. Chief, what's your uh, what's your secret? How do you, how do we, me and Coops and uh, Gonzo, how do we get to 94? And above, well, I, really, I really don't know. Uh, you have the head of hair. I the hair. Well, yeah, well, that, that I can tell you. <laughs> my mother and father were 85, my mother 84, my father, and um, they both had a full head of hair. And my mother's hair was all dark hair except on the side, she just had a little gray. Wow, so we've always had a full head of hair, so that's hereditary, you know. Yeah, the rest of it, I don't know why, because uh, I, I, I'm a social I drink, I have my I have like a nice glass of beer, I have myself a scotch nice, and soda yeah. or whatever. But I smoked cigarettes from 16 to 26, gave them up. I, I, I smoked a cigar, a, a, cig, a, a pipe for a while. Then I nice. smoked cigars for another seven or eight years. So it wasn't exactly like I treated my uh, body like a temple. <laughs> so, <laughs> my, my, my yeah, maybe maybe my, that was a secret. Yeah, my brothers, uh, there were six of us, five of my siblings, all gone. My sister died last year at 95, by the way, so. I'm the um, only one left out of the uh, of the six of us, so it's a it's a it's a plan God has for us. He just doesn't. He never tells me what his plan is. That's the problem. So I've asked him, but he, he doesn't answer me. So. <laughs> yeah. some, By some the way, Father Brady, Father Brady was our chaplain, another wonderful man, Monsignor Brady. And he said to me one day, Matty, do you still pray?" And I said, "No, Father, I don't pray anymore." And he looked at me like he was kind of astounded. I said. I just talk to God these days. Nice. And he started, he started laughing. He said, I know what you mean. Yeah, me too. Nice man. Gons, I think it might be that time for the for the chief. Oh, we have to uh, give him a little rundown on what we're doing. 
uh, you know about the old school tip of the day, right, Chief? What's that? I'm sorry. My hearing is the greatest, so I apologize. The old school tip. Did uh, Ronnie tell you about our old school tip? No. What is it? So, so the old school tip of oh, the Ronnie. day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the old school tip of the day. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So now is the time. Hold on one second. Hold on one we'll second. We'll all queued up. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. You know what time it is, Gonzo? It's time yes, for... Sir. Okay. It's time for the don't go nowhere. It's the old school tip of the day. Yeah, that this wait, is wait, wait. day day. The old school tip of the day. Where's the music? Day God. <laughs> it's there. I want to make sure the chief is listening to us. All right, chief, go ahead. Give it to us. We live in an imperfect world. There are some people who think they're perfect and all like that. You have to understand we're human beings, we all make mistakes. Making mistakes is no shame. Not failing to learn from them is the shame. Falling down, no shame. Not getting up is the shame. You're always dealing with human beings. And lastly, is that in the history of man, no man ever learned anything while he was talking. Always take time to listen. Thank you. Wow. wow. This guy is Very the good nice. 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 It's really an awesome. honor to have you every, on. Every time I think we wow. got the, you know, the show, that I say, "Wow, that one was the one." <laughs> the next one is always like, "Now this is the one." one. That's very Holy kind of you guys. Man. Thank you so much, Chief. It was a pleasure listening to your stories, man. Thank it really was. Sure. Yeah. Thank and, you know, thank you. you. Had your sons there. We'll give them a little credit. We have a wise. I won't tell you, but I tell you the truth. <laughs> Peace, boys. Peace. <laughs> hold on a minute before we go. All right, yeah, hold on. Don't sign off just yet. We'll take this up. show right back down into the gutter. Hold on a second. We'll uh, uh, at the show. Me and Louie let met this young lady. She's uh, put out a, a calendar of firefighter women. They, the proceeds go to a great foundation. I don't remember if it is offhand. Uh, we met her and her husband. Right? She's the one that uh, fell off the uh, scooter or whatever. Oh yeah, she, yeah. She cracked her face. Right. Uh, but anyway, this is the calendar. I happened to get a copy of it. Isn't that crazy? She's the one on the last page. Gone. Show that one, sweetheart. That would be Kendall. Kendall, great job. Great. Uh, there's some hot chicks in there. Oh, some she's guys. in the chat. She's in the chat. Yeah, she's in the chat. I got the. Uh, here's her. Uh, uh, I believe that's Facebook. And I did post the website for the calendar for those that want to support. I will post it again for those that Tulsa want to... Metro Woman on. Fire. Just don't ride a scooter with her. Just don't ride a scooter because <laughs> you could be in trouble. <laughs> Where's the website, Gons? Oh, it's uh, right here. My bad. I posted it in the chat. And for you guys, here it goes. We're right here. That's a good Take them right to the website. They go ahead and purchase the calendar. Let out a couple of dollars if you want to see a couple of really hot firefighting chicks. Which, uh, okay. The, I'm, I must go. tell you something. My kids call me and grandchildren the dinosaur. You see what I'm holding up? What's that <laughs> bone? Nice. This is the only thing I have. No computer, no iPods, nothing. And this thing doesn't work too well since the crank fell off the side. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I thought you were going to pull hello, hello. A, a rotary phone there, Chief. <laughs> Can I please speak to Evergreen 6, 9455? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bensonhurst, 554. Benson 554. Five, four. I heard a firehouse. Jeez. <laughs> Chief, thank you again. And guys, uh, thank you. Great, great, great show. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank, you, thank you very much for the interview. I appreciate it. Ah, it was awesome. It was our pleasure. Believe yes, me. kudos to you guys. Yeah, be, be, on behalf of all the Farrells, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, those Farrell boys. Watch Keep an eye on them boys. Farrells, I'll tell you. Yeah. Don't go anywhere yet. Stay on because yeah, we're going to keep don't you log on off. the after show. We want to talk to you the after show. Okay. All right, guys. Well, so who do we have on uh, Thursday night, bro? We have uh, Tom Gardner, part two. Oh, Tommy Gardner. Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom Gardner, part Tom two. Gardner. Cuckoo, cuckoo. That man, yeah. crazy. <laughs> Love him, though. Yeah, the name counts. Two yeah. times a week. Monday. Yes. All yes, right. We will see you on Thursday night. As always, yeah. stay low and go. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Uh, we'll see God you. God bless you, guys. God bless you. All Thank right, you, guys. Chief. Stay safe. See you on the top floor. Good night, everybody.